Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with the busy woman's cheerleader and leadership developer, Cindy Rand. She is a seasoned professional that is known as an energetic and giving soul, encouraging anyone who crosses her path to pursue their dreams and live life more abundantly. As a serial entrepreneur, humanitarian author, mom, and glam mom, her mission is to empower and teach a diverse community of like-minded women in mind, spirit, and body and finances. She has a great story. Enjoy this interview. Cindy, thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You are very welcome. Thank you for having me. You bet. So you're the busy woman's cheerleader and you're a leadership developer. But before I get into that, what I want to do is I want to address the last three years with COVID. And I'm curious how you survived that time period and how it changes the way that you live your life and conduct business now. Oh, goodness. Ah, let's see here. So I have like these, um, <laughs> some people say like an alter ego, but it's not an alter ego. I enjoy repurposing furniture. Um, it was very difficult for me, especially being like a hands-on person, even, um, you know, a working executive always like into the actual work to have to, you know, be forced to stay home. But I repurposed a lot of furniture, and I believe during that time frame, um, when we could not work, I did a lot of repurposing furniture, a lot of interior, um, you know, designs and sewing and all types of things um, just to keep my mind stable. Yeah, and and I think that was the key to all of it is just keeping things fluid and active and developing, and, and that, that makes total sense. I know I was a busybody during that time period as well. So, oh, um, oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. So let me get a better handle of what you do and get to your essence, and I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. One of the kids looks up at you and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? Okay, so um, I have to give you a little history first. Now, first of all, I have been a certified accountant and degreed accountant for almost 30 years and a business coach. Now, with those two elements, different areas as far as like, you know, the C-suite all the way down to, um, I would say, staff accountant, you know, when I first got started from college, um, from all of those different elements, I was able to work a lot with different businesses, the different businesses, different niches, um, everything from A to Z as far as, you know, getting them started, taking their ideas and turning it into fruition. So what has happened with the Busy Woman's Network is that this is like the second half of my life. So I considered myself semi-retiring, <laughs> that I was going to retire. So with a busy woman, with a busy woman's network, it's a culmination of all of those skills. However, it is more so to help aspiring and established entrepreneurs start, scale, build their businesses and their brands. Um, as far as like the coaching, the accounting, particular portions of it, you know, the finances, legitimizing their businesses. Oftentimes, people still have their regular nine to five and what they've started doing, they call it um, the side hustles, you know, the little side hustles. And so, you know, my premise is to never become complacent. I always tell people don't become complacent with one thing. So even with those who are still on the, the grind with the nine to five, they've got something extra going on that may be lucrative. However, because they do it part time and every blue moon and, you know, upon demand, it's not a full legitimized business. So part of the Busy Women's Network is to give them resources and tools to be able to thrive mind, body, spirit, and finances. It's basically for those entrepreneurs. So that's great. I appreciate the the background. That's going to help me a little bit as I kind of foray through your life here. But I want to know, when you were in the third grade, what was your (laughs) dream when you grew up? What what did you want to be? Oh, my gosh. I think every little girl started off saying they wanted to be a nurse. Because, you know, I enjoy helping people. And that was my first thought at, you know, around about third grade. But to be honest with you, I would say towards the end of third grade, I really remember vividly being so interested in geography and maps. So I wanted to travel. I wanted to see those places that I had seen in the books, in the history books. Um, I wasn't a person even growing up that really got into like one of those, I think at the time it was like the Harlequin magazines or the, the romance novels. 
I always enjoyed exploring different cultures, different cities, different states, different countries. That's wonderful. Um, so are you happy with how everything turned out? I mean, you have, you have kind of a, a, a second half of, of a career right now, but with everything that you've done, are you happy and satisfied? I'm never happy and satisfied completely. I will say I find a form of contentment. But I, I live by my own motto, I'm never complacent. And it doesn't mean that I'm like a busybody or I can't be um, happy. I can definitely be happy. It's just that I'm constantly thriving and working towards more. In that drive, you have to have good people around you. Who's been a hero or a role model for you? Oh, my goodness. Um, I would say first family. Um, family. There are um, some coaches and some mentors that I've had over the years that have really impacted and continue to impact me, you know, to this very day. I'm, I'm that person that's normally the one that carries the weight of the group. However, I'm so thankful for, you know, the, the few that I do have that I know will check me if I need to be checked or basically, you know, give me like that other side of information. Because, you know, the thing is with, with human nature and our brain, and I say this a lot, yes, I know a lot, but I don't know everything, and I own that. But a lot of times as we age, people think that it's okay to say I know everything or, you know, I'm finished learning or I don't need to, you know, know that part. I'm, I'm continuously like that third grader. I'm absorbing more information. So I'm still teachable. And people should remain teachable so that when you have these mentors that give you insight beyond what you normally would think, you can take that information, gauge it, and apply it. So of everybody alive on the planet right now, who would you love to meet? Who would you love to talk to? Oh, goodness. You know, I've never really thought about that. <laughs> I've never thought about it. I've never thought yeah. about it. Um, you know, I'd like to meet Denzel Washington. I would yeah. love to honestly, uh, his, his energy and his wisdom um, at this stage in his career and his life, um, I'd, I'd really love to, to talk to Denzel Washington. If I actually had a choice, it would be Denzel Washington. You know, I always refer to the elders in jazz like Sonny Rollins and all those older cats as like the Jazz Jedi Council and Cloud City and Empire. And I could see Denzel being up there, being one of those elders that's kind oh, yeah. of looking, you know, looking down and getting ready to dispense the wisdom. Um, let's go back to your childhood. You're obviously a very highly driven professional how did these seeds get you? Where were you born and raised, and how did this all begin for you? Well, you know, my father was military, so I will say we've been all over the place. <laughs> we've been all over the place. But this is the thing. Um, the baseline for our home, my mother's a devout Christian and still is, and so we have the law and the Lord in our house. You know, that's just what we always said. We had this box between those hmm. two. And um, basically, uh, I would say what really carved – it for me, I think I've always had like an entrepreneurial spirit. I, I really do. And, and I used to ask where did it come from, but I was always like creating something or saying this is my business or this or that. Um, as a teenager, um, I remember my first job was at a fast food restaurant. I was so happy. I bugged my mother to such a, a magnitude. I, I, I bugged her because I wanted like the workers from it because I was so young. Um, she had always said that, you know, we'll get you everything that you need, but when it comes down to those things that you want, you have to get a job. And so, you know, back then, the fancy jeans and tennis shoes and different things, so it's like, okay, okay, I'll get my job. So beyond babysitting, I would say my very first one that was actually a legitimate job with taxes taken out, I was at a fast food restaurant. And so long story short, um, what I noticed, I was too young to work the, the fry bins and um, flip the, you know, the burgers and all this stuff. So I was dealing with the money they, they put me because I was good at math. They put me up in the front um, to basically uh, count down the registers and to wait on the customers, you know, take the, the orders and basically take the bag from the person in the back and give it to them in the front. So I was dealing with the money, counting money. And it still didn't quite resonate and click at that point. So then um, as I began to get, you know, more into the job. I'm excited about it. My mother said, as long as your grades stay up, you know, you can continue to work this job. And I remember the um, managers and the supervisors were so bitter and mean and angry just all the time, just all the time. And I remember saying to myself, 
um, one day, you know, I don't want to be the manager of a, a burger flipper. I want to sit on my butt and tell people, you know, what to do. I don't want to have it where somebody's telling me what to do. Now, that's a, a mind of a young person, of a teenager. And it's not even the point, and, and I, I say this a lot even now with um, the, the leadership uh, speeches that I have to do with people. It's not about being a boss. It's about being a leader, and those are two distinct completely different things. Um, at that time, when I was coming up in school, um, my father, when he uh, was home, had a lot of input about my schedule, which drove me into oblivion because I wanted to be like the other teenagers and just take the fun courses. Well, what he was doing, he put me in every secretary's class, every typing class. Um, the computers really weren't out then, but anything that was basically administrative he put me into those classes, and I was upset about it, but I, I thumbed my way through. And then um, finally, it was like a book, some bookkeeping classes that I had early years in high school, and for some reason, it clicked. It clicked for me then. Now, still with the mindset of wanting to travel, my thought at that point was, okay, I'm going to be a travel, attend a travel uh, flight attendant or pilot. And I want to travel, all, you know, all over the world, but I want it as like leisure, not complete business all the time. So it, it really clicked for me that accounting was challenging my thinking, and I loved it. Um, normally, I would kind of whiz through things or I get bored like the average teenager, but I whiz through it. I whiz through it, and it became, I still had that thought that I wanted to become a flight attendant and travel the world, but this accounting did something for me that I couldn't describe. So long story short, that was my goal was to go into um, being a flight attendant and get that information for either a flight attendant or a pilot. But I think those seeds were planted from my father forcing me to take those classes. We joke about that now um, because I didn't know that that was actually carving a career for me that I would enjoy. Every day you wake up, you have these motivating forces that are a part of what you do and and, and getting through your day to do everything. What is it that motivates you? What What drives you in life? Oh, gosh. At this point in my life, I've got two elderly parents on the last quarter of their lives, and then I've got two grandchildren on the first quarter of theirs. And I'm the eldest child, so I feel like I'm supposed to take care of both of them, both sets. Um, I'm at a point where I want my parents to be very comfortable and not to be concerned, overly concerned about anything. I just want them to stay with me as long as possible and thrive in you know, their respective areas. And then my grandchildren oh, my gosh, the thought of having hand in the next generation is so exciting to me. And it's like now these things that I do, I'm, it has, I have these people in mind. I have the grandchildren in mind, and I have my parents in mind. I, I want to be um, okay. I want to leave a legacy, something for them to grab onto and take with them, and then something for my parents to have in their heart that their hard work didn't go awry. So speaking of legacy, what are you the proudest of that you've done in your life? Take risk. <laughs> <laughs> Take risk. Take risk. <laughs> so with that in mind, you know, kind of as the cornerstone of your life, what's been the best client response you've ever gotten back for work you've done? Oh, my gosh. Um, that's where the Busy Woman's Cheerleader came from, that name. The Busy Woman's Cheerleader came from my clients complimenting on how I motivated them and got them from being stuck and frustrated to actually thriving in their business and pursuing their dreams to be business owners or to scale their business. Um, that's where that name came from. And it was so funny at first, you know, when I heard it, but I was like, oh, okay, it's affectionate, you know, just standing affectionately. But that was most exciting to me. Um, to hear a client actually like this process or these packages that I've put together for different businesses and for different groups, they actually got it. They actually got it. They they actually receive the full capacity of the package to help them put their business on a propelling scale. So if you have a dream tonight, you run into the 20-year-old version of yourself and you, you give that version of you a piece of advice based on what you've lived and the wisdom you've gained in your life, what would you tell your younger version? Oh, my gosh. Do not ask for patience. <laughs> Do not ever ask for patience because 
the universe will take you through all types of tests to make sure that you understand the importance of patience. I tell my younger self, oh gosh, to make sure that every lesson, be it success or failure that you're faced with, learn something from it so you don't have to repeat it. So everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your clients, but ultimately you live your life. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think that I am a kind-hearted, giving soul, a person who genuinely loves people and genuinely wants to see people succeed. If anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything revolving around your world, where can they go on the web? Okay. Um, they could go to the website. Let's see. It's thecindyrand.com. That's T-H-E, Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, R-A-N-D.com. A lot of the information is there. Um, I'm also, well, I try to be a little active um, as the Busy Woman's Cheerleader on the social media platforms <laughs> whenever I have a chance. I, I try to, you know, kind of engage there. But basically, um, I would say since I've come from behind the wall, a good bit of the most updated information would be found there on my website, thecindyrand.com. Perfect, Cindy. Hey, thank you very much for taking time out today. Good luck with everything. I appreciate it. Thank you. You as well. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, music, mental health, and more from around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm-hmm.